And welcome back, Internet Land, for the Black Crag Invitational Finals. It's time for Friday Night Blitz Bowl! And it's semi final time. Thundergut Thumpers are going to take on the Pint and a Halflings for third place in this competition. Now, there has been a big old break this season, thanks to Grandfather Nurgle and his plagues taking over the land. But we are back for Friday Night Blitzball and the Thundergut Thumpers with their Ogre team and Nobla, Titchy Nobla players are going in against the Pint and a Halflings. Now, the thing about these teams, now there's no real speed advantage from either team, um, both quite middle of the road with their, with their speed, m m mid if you m will. M m mid, um, uh, but back again. When you look at the Thundergut Thumpers, they have the numbers advantage, there's more players on the field, but the Pine and the Halflings are better at passing the ball around between them. And you would think better players in general compared to the Noblars who are just kind of there for numbers. But, but as always, you see those little hopefuls and hefties and they're going to have to go against those two huge Ogres. There's not much you can do to get around it, and it's a long way around it. Those Ogres are titanic, especially compared to the Halflings. We're going to have the team throw off at the moment, see who goes first for deployment and onto the field. And here comes the flip. And it looks like the Ogres have it. The Thundergut Thumpers will be setting up and taking the first play. And as you can see, as we'd expect, the Ogres get pride of place middle of the field. Now it may interest you to note, Sniff, that we are playing on a different field for the semi-finals. There are two, count them, two trapdoors and four obstacles to work their team's way around. Now, as you said, this is the finals field. There is more chance that there is going to be interruptions to the play. It makes it harder for these teams to strategize. It certainly does. And with the end game challenges of a semi-final, we will see some spectacular possibly changes coming in right at the end phase of the game so do not leave your couches stay tuned and see what happens when the pint and a halflings fight the thundergut thumpers for a place in this competition now as we've said scratch this is for the third place in this tournament there will be a grand final to crown our champions and who's playing in that grand final well sniff the grand final next week will be between sticks and stones and the golden hind they are playing off for first and second place they are going home with all the biscuits the winner from that competition all the marbles, as it were. And we have our ball on the pitch. We've already got our first move. And what do you think about getting those ogres out there straight away? I mean, we're not playing a dazzling game at the moment. We are doing exactly what we've expected. And here come the pine and a halflings. And again, as you would expect, the hefty is front and centre. How hefty he's going to be against those two massive ogres, yet to be seen. But our runners come up to support. And our other runner, it looks like, on the... No, we've got a hopeful. On the other side, they are mixing it up here, the pint and a halflings. It, it's definitely the play that the Thundergut Thumpers have been using the whole time is getting those ogres out there. They are really a two-player team. They are really a two-player team. The Nobla are getting up there, stealing the ball with its titchy moves, getting close to those pine and a halflings and retreating behind the ogres. Now, is this ogre trying to make a mark here? He has made a mark, but the... Pint and a Halflings are going to hit straight back with that Hefty getting its free block move supported by its other player and it's pushed back. It's not a ogre. not an easy feat to push back an Ogre. No, and not only that, but he is showing his stones here by going straight up and standing on that trapdoor. Achieving a challenge, getting the Pine and a Halflings their first point of the game by being brave enough to stand on that trapdoor. Of course, that, that little point is only scored when it is the other player's turn. So they've taken that challenge card a little bit early there. Very well, that, eager. That little hefty's balls must be so big, he might step on them by accident. He might have them in that pot that's on his head just for safe keepings. I know I would with a massive ogre like that staring down at me. Now... The Here Pint come. and the Halflings are getting out. They're getting out of that end zone and stepping up for support. Now, if, you can, if you've got the throwing ability of this team, it's good to have some people up there to throw it to. That's exactly right. Certainly a better throwing game than the Thundergut Thumpers are used to, so maybe that will be the difference in this particular game. 
Here we have the ogre has taken out the hefty. He has no time for that hefty that just gave him a shove. And you can imagine the look on that hefty's face when the ogre just took one step back and started swinging immediately. And but he is back to the sin bin, back to lick his wounds. Absolutely. The Noblar doing what it's best at, slipping in between the Pine Anna Halfling team, making its way down to the Pine Anna end zone. And it's looking a little bit dicey right there. Now, Scratch, I just commended the Pint and the Halflings for getting out on the field, but they've left themselves wide open for that Noblar to come straight through the middle. And that is the thing about having the Noblars on the field. You forget about them compared to the size of the Ogres, and then they just whoop right past you. Now, we have a multi-ball come out onto the field because the Ogres did not make a completion. There are two balls to cover now, and here comes... Two balls just like in that hefty's helmet. <laughs> here comes the defense. The hopeful is out trying to stop that Noblar. Will they be successful here with a knockdown? They have not been successful, but they're going to play an extra play here and re-roll, see if they can take out this Noblar and protect their end zone. And it looks like they have been successful with a crunch. And I don't think the Noblar is going to make that save. They very rarely do. The Noblar is going to be taken out. And that pasty, that tasty, tasty pasty is right there for the hopeful to scoop up. That Noblar got hit stiff. How stiff? Stiffer than a middle-aged podcast listener who's constantly blasted with ads for free samples of blue chew. Sniff. <laughs> That is fairly stiff, my man. And he is back in the injury bin. Now, the balls are on the field. The ogre is going to take up one of those balls now, but it's too close to the Pine Anna players. It's just going to get knocked around. And here we watch it bounce. Off the ogre, off the obstacle, and back behind the ogre. Nobody's going to be happy with that play. He's going to make a bit of a lash out at the nearest Pine Anna halfling player. Can he take him down? Absolutely he can. And another halfling bites the dirt. Back to the sin bin. Still got some plays here from the Ogres. And they're going to get that pasty. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to steal a pasty from a halfling sniff. But it is not safe even if it you are that no big. It is no easy feat. <laughs> here he goes. And he's, they are well set up for an end zone play here. They have picking up, picked up the ball which has given them a point. It has evened out the scores. It's such a low-scoring game right now, but that doesn't mean anything. These games are long, and they tend to pick up and get exciting just when you think that it's, it's just time for a hot dog. moving along. Yeah, right. Even the halfling players are thinking it's time for a hot dog at the eight-minute mark of this match, and we still are sitting at one versus one, even though there are two balls currently on the field. The runner here has gone... A little bit crazy, a little bit squirrel in the head, and he has gone to take on an ogre all by himself. He's managed to get a decent hit in. He's knocked down that ogre. It's not sent him to the injury bin, but it has freed up. He has managed to balls. hit him hard, and that is not an easy feat. Not in the slightest. We still have... Oh, look out, though. We have left one of the ogres free to move, and they have gone straight to the end zone. The Thundergut Pumpers... is a... Touchdown! touchdown! The, the first touchdown of the game. Almost nine minutes in, and we finally have a touchdown on the board. The Thundergun Thumpers are streaking ahead, 5-1. to one. They are going to be very happy with that, and still in a decent position to stop the Pine and a Halflings getting their first touchdown of the game. Here comes the Ogre, I imagine, with... A tackle on the way. And are they going to make it? And the Pine and a Halflings are throwing their save. It's not good enough. And they are going to go down to the injury bin. And we have a score on the board for the Thundergut Thumpers. And no reply here from the Pine and a Halflings. Scratch, if you're the Pine and a Halflings at this point, what do you do to try and turn the tables. I mean, this is a point in the game, Sniff, where you have to keep your cool. You could easily throw your nearest player 
Adenoga trying to tackle him and get him out of the way, but you have to do some seriously good tackling to take out that ogre. You may have to get a little bit sneaky here and get a few players up the board and just wait for that ball to give you an opportunity to snatch it away. Now, Pino and a Halflings have moved up the board. They have moved three players all running and managed to get themselves another score. Maybe that's how they level out this game. Not with touchdowns, but with challenge cards. The only way you're going to get there is to block those ogres. And it's hard when you're that small. It certainly is. But we see the Pine and a Halfling strategy here. That Halfling has frustrated the ogre who's gone to get the ball. But now that there's a player in marking distance, that ball has bounced instead. And that will stop the Thundergut Thumpers from taking this ball this turn. And it's... it might give the Pine and a Halflings the chance they need to scoop that up and head towards the end zone. And another bit of luck for the Pine and a Halflings. That Ogre has gone in for the tackle but just managed a shove. That Hopeful has gone forward. Another Ogre coming out of the end zone. Ready to do some damage. But no. It's moving out, moving up. They're getting their Ogres back into position. That's an interesting tactic. You'd think that with the passing ability of the Pint and the Halflings, they might want to mark that man so that they can't make that pass. And they've moved up exactly as you said to a mark. But again, we have a pine and a halfling player going for a tackle by himself against an ogre. We are seeing some desperate moves, I would say, from the pine and a halflings. But they are managing to get a shove up and they are following it up. So maybe opening up this ball in the middle of the field for the pine and a halflings will finally get possession. Some desperation moves here from the pint and the halflings. They are playing an aggressive game. They don't want to sit... On their hands, they want to come out swinging and they want those points. Maybe this is... And, and like we were saying, we were discussing their throwing ability. They're going to go for a pass here by the looks of it. If they can get this... Oh, it's disastrous. This pass is not going to be completed. And the Pine of Halflings have gone for probably... The shortest possession so far we've seen in this game. It seems like a curse. Every time I talk up a player's ability, they do the exact opposite. <laughs> they disappointed you. They've disappointed their coach. But they are still in this game. We have three, count them, three pine and a halfling players. I don't know how right many times I've said that they're great at throwing. And the first throw is a whiffer. Is this it? is by a country mile. Oh, it is It is not even close. We have the ogre looking like it's going to make a pa passage for the Noblars to get through here. It looks like the pine and a halfling player has made their save with their tin pot helmet. They are just going to be knocked down for a change instead of sent all the way packing to the injury bin. The ogres on the other side, on the other wing, coming in for a Another mark. They won't have a chance to tackle this round. It is a big, wide board, but all the players are packed into that little square in the middle. They are rumbling and stumbling over that ball. Nobody wants to give up possession. It is blitz bowl soup in the middle of this field here as the Pine and a Halflings once again an unsupported tackle against that ogre. And they are really pulling it out. All the stops here. And they have successfully tackled this ogre and sent him injured off the field. What? Now, that is an amazing play from the Pine and a Halflings. They have backed themselves. Going for the ball now. It's going to bounce. And will it bounce? No, it has not had a successful bounce there away from the ogres and the Nobla. It is going to be a tough one. They've lifted up another player off the field, pulled up by his teammate to get back in this game. And play turns over to the Thundergut Thumpers. And this situation in the middle of the board is still bowling shoe ugly. It is not <laughs> getting better anytime soon. And somebody's got to snatch that ball and make a break for it. And here he comes. The man himself, the Noblar, with his ability to snatch the ball out from under other players as they go. He takes off down an Into empty side of the wide field. wide open space. Absolutely. Taking possession of the ball, Thundergut Thumpers are on six. The Pine and a Halflings managed to claw it up to three by taking out that Ogre, but it is still a big wide gap between these teams, and it doesn't look like it's changing anytime soon. The Ogre takes another swing and pushes back one of the Pine and a Halflings. 
I mean, that Nobla is completely free to do some damage on that side of the field. This might if be... If you're the pint and a halflings looking at that Nobla with the ball, you've got to be shaking. You've got to be shaking like a Doberman trying to pass a peach seed. <laughs> There is definitely some peach seed passing, I think, on behalf of the Halflings right now. Because even if they get their players in their end zone and up to that Noblar, that Noblar can just avoid and run around these players on the field. That is the scary part of going up against the Noblars in the Ogre team. Now, as you'd expect, the Pint and the Halflings bringing those players out to the end zone to try and defend their area against the, the Noblar. We have a... Dual tackle here against the Ogre, and another Ogre is sent to the injury bin. Both Improbable. of the heavy hitters here. Those Ogres out and out of action. What are the Noblars in the team going to do without their Ogre overlords ready to back them up? Are they going to? We got an immediate reserve call, and I wouldn't blame the coach for using that to get an Ogre back onto the end zone as quickly as possible. A Noblar moving up. But look at that. Just short Painfully of the end close. zone. Painfully close to that end zone. You've got to think to that there's not going to be much stopping that Noblar in the next turn. I mean, it's going to be a desperation play on behalf of the Pine and a Halflings to there stop There needs to be a miracle for made. that to be stopped. Challenge card taken up here. A slow start to this game, but it's really starting to pick up the pace. Pint and a half links four. Oh, Thunder no. Thumpers on six. Here. We've had a multi-ball. The Ogres, unable to make that touchdown, have caused a multi-ball, which has sent one of the Pint and a half links standing on that trapdoor straight to the injury bin as it opens up and puts a pasty on the pitch. This is crazy. That Pint and a half link is now within range to challenge for that tackle. And we have a pint and a halfling going all the way to the end zone without the ball in hand. Was that a mix-up or are they going to try for a pass here? Are they going to try? They are going to try to throw a completion. This They've, has to be it. This has to be it. This is the big one, and it looks like we've got a successful pass. It's into good. The end zone. It that is good. That is a... Touchdown! That pasty went flying right to where it needed to be. That hungry halfling has snapped it up and scored some X. Oh, we've got a completed pass and a touchdown right now. That will really help out the pine and a halfling score. And another challenge card, which is showboating for the crowd. Now in the semi-finals of the Black Crag Invitational, is anything goes with those challenge cards. If you could score it, you score as many as you can, which is what we are seeing right now. And we the are seeing... The Halflings have pulled ahead 9-6. to six. This is a great little comeback, but the game is far from finished. And look at that. Speaking of far from finished, they have managed to get themselves on the scoreboard with a touchdown, but they left that Noblar right in their end zone, and he has re responded with a touchdown of his own, leveling out the scores immediately. 9 all, and if I was a betting man, if I had money on this game, I would be very worried right now. You say that like you don't have money on this game, Sniff, which we all know that you do. I feel like that would be a conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> that halfling taken out by the ogre there with ease, and we have an open pitch, no ball on the pitch yet, waiting to see what these teams can do. Okay. We have a takedown here. Very happy with that. The coach shows off the takedowns that they have achieved. The that players aren't the up. only ones that can showboat. That's it. We've got Thundergut Thumpers pushing on ahead here to a score of 12. To 12. Three ahead now of Pine and a Halflings. Not quite enough to clear the board, but a good score nonetheless. The next ball is coming onto the pitch. Trapdoor in the center, and it looks like a good bounce for the Pine and a Halflings. If they get up there, are they going to go straight for the ball, or are they going to set themselves up? And here comes the runner. We're going straight for the pasty. What was I thinking? Pasty on the pitch. Halfling's going to snuffle it up. Pasty on the pitch. And apart from the uh, the ogre and the nobler out there, we, we're almost back to a start of the game scenario. Ball in the middle. Both teams on the edge. 
It's it, the, the scores were pretty even until a second ago. Mm. This could go either way. The Pirate of Halflings taking their time moving up. I believe they're defending their end zone, which is again worth another point on the board. And we are going to 10 12. In such it feels a... like the pint and a halflings are trying to avoid another situation like we saw before where all the players were trapped in the middle of the board, fighting each other, nobody had control of the ball and we're trying to get away from that, get some players up and into the end zone. We can see things evening out here a little bit here, Sniff. We've got some defence from the pint over halflings and we've got some offence. That ogre coming up and marking the player with the ball it's going to be a little bit of a pain for the Pine Out of a Halflings to get around here and either avoid the Ogres or take them head on. And it looks like they're going to try and tackle this Ogre, clear him from the field. They're liking their chances. They've done it before. Can they do it again? The roll looks good. Can the Ogre resist the tackle from both of these players? They're pretty good, and Look it looks like they strong. have. They're going down. They're not going to be sent off the field this time. That strong armor of the ogre doing its duty. And here we go again. We've got a throw it being seems accepted. That, it seems that 10 minutes into this game, the pint and the halflings remembered that they could pass the ball. <laughs> and pass the ball they are. That looks like, oh, it's not quite a successful throw. We must have had a... Uh, Bit of an because it was a long throw, it hasn't made quite the way there. It's landed just short, still well and truly close to the Pine and a Halfling team. They and should nowhere be able to snap near it up. any of the Thundergut Thumpers players. Oh, he says, he says, too the soon. Ogre comes through and directly challenges for the ball, and then a Nobla coming straight up the wing. Suddenly, this pass seems like a complete. Completely bad move from the Pineapple Halflings. These Ogres and Noblars have learnt their lesson from previous games and they are going to box in um, as many of these flank, flank manoeuvres as they can. Here and it comes. just shows how quickly a good situation in this game can, can deteriorate and so quickly it's, it's more dire for the Pineapple Halflings than the pub bathroom after 10 p.m. Oh, that is that is a dire situation there, Sniff. <laughs> Here come the Pine Over Halflings with another tackle. They are really trying to throw their weight around here and get the Ogres out of the play. I think they may have seen some of the issues that the Ogres gave the Golden Hinds last game, and they are going to actually use an extra move to sneak up this ball and get it away from this down ogre player since they have not been able to send him to the injury bin. They've gone down the narrow side of the field. We've seen this before, Sniff. Right into what the path thinking? of that Nobler. This is an excellent way to get your player trapped in a corner. The Nobler is going to move straight up. And the ball is going to be stuck there. Now, are they going to get a score here for blocking enough of the opponent, opposing team? Here we may have an end game play, and we do have an end game play, which is played immediately by the player with the lowest score, and the teams are forced to switch sides only in Blitz Bowl. That Sniff. is crazy, and that is another semi final um, thing that, that it's a mad it's a rule just for the semi final, and the, the, so the players have completely switched end zones now. They have switched end zones. Now the Pine and a Halflings will be headed in the complete opposite direction and maybe they are not as trapped in the corner as they thought they were. The Noblar going for a takedown, going for a touchdown, a touchdown, a tackle. What are they doing? He's tackling and he's successful at it. That Halfling going to the injury bin at the opposite side of the field and that Noblar now needs to get to the Opposite end zone, which is actually his original really close end zone. To. He's actually a threat here. Will he? Will he remember it though? Thundergut Thumpers taking up an extra two points for that injury that they've caused. The Noblar is going for a run, and I'm wondering where the Noblar's going. 
Does he know that the end zones have changed Has and he, he actually forgotten? needs to go in the other direction? This nobbler milling around the middle of the field. This change of end zones hasn't just confused the commentators, <laughs> the spectators, but it's also confused the players and the coaches. Which way are we heading? Where are we going? Speaking of confusion, the halfling players are coming out of their injury bin onto an end zone, which already has nobblers who are still sitting there from the start of the game. Where is the referee in all of this? The referee should be picking this up. Right. These guys are making their rules up as they go along scratch. Here comes some more end of game plays for the halflings. It looks like there's going to be some big score changes, but they are going to have to get touchdowns and special plays to make these happen. And still, it sits at 10-14 the score. And Only we are counting in down. semi-final blitz bowl would you see something this crazy. A crazy change of rules. The ref's letting it happen because he knows the fans <laughs> love it. And, and these players are going crazy. It's 10-14, it's but we'll see if there's any change to the scores. This is Exciting stuff, Scratch. I'm on the edge of my seat. Absolutely. We have yet another player taken down by the halflings here and freeing the ball up to bounce around. Are they going to get it? And is it going to be enough? We are so close to the final stages of this game. It's almost a wonder if anyone can get to an end zone at this stage. And look at that bounce for the ball. That halfling must be devastated. The ball has bounced to the other side of the ogre. And another halfling coming up Scooped to get up that again. ball. And of course, all he has to do now is run back to the end zone that he came from in order to make this score. The ogre stands up and may just ruin his chances in one foul tackle. And here it comes. The halfling knocked down, and the ball is out of their hands it's once again. It's such a shame there was a pint and a halfling waiting in the end zone for the pass. Absolutely waiting for that pass. And here comes the pasty patch bounce. It wasn't even planned. It was just complete fluke because of the end zone changes. And here comes a frustrated ogre player who has to step aside instead of do a normal move and so he can't even get the ball either. We are down to our last cards of the game and that is one more play for each team and that that pasty sits agonizingly in the center of the field. Will they be able to get it at this point, I can't see the pint and the halflings pulling anything out at this stage. Especially with that ogre making a special sidestep out of sequence, and he is on top of that ball. The pint and the halflings are going to have to mark here, which is going to take up their moves for their turn. And the Thundergut Thumpers looks like, even though the sides, the end zones have changed, and those halflings are so close, looks like he is going to stop them from getting anywhere near that ball. Pine and a halflings taking a swing. They're doing everything they can. They are raging against these two giant ogre players, but it's just not good enough. They are doing all the all that they can do, tackling and tackling some more. They are going to take down that ogre, but, but again that he's ball not is out of the still field. On the other side, there's no way they're gonna get to it in time. The and he says, as the pine and a halfling skips the square with the ogre in it, sneaking up that ball, taking it back. But I think that is the last play we are going to see from the pine and a halflings. Moving up a hopeful from the end zone, really desperately getting every last move they can out of the last turn of the game. But here comes Noblar, and it looks like that is it for the pine and a halfling. Noblar is going to put some salt in the wound if he can get with, this tackle, and he does. With that tackle goes the dreams of the pint and a halflings. You can see the crowd in the stand, all the pint and a halfling fans. They are devastated, but the Thundergut Thumper fans are going crazy. They, are they out know of that suits. that has secured them the victory. It is all here for the sprinkles now. The handshake goes up by the coaches and, and there they all are all over your, your third winners. place winners for the black crag invitational are the thundergut thumpers what a spectacular finish to a spectacular season we will see you in the final finals coming up the grand finals next week the golden hind will take on sticks and bones make sure you are there for that round